In this video, we're going to take a look at the third JWT lab from Portswigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called JWT Authentication Bypass via Weak Signing Key. In the first video, we went through an introduction into JWT attacks and covered the background information that's available on Portswigger's Web Security Academy, as well as some of the tools that we can use to work with JWTs like JWT.io and CyberChef, Python libraries, Burp Suite extensions, and the JWT tool. So we're not going to go over that material again, but we will look at the background information which is specific to this lab. Some signing algorithms, such as HS256, use an arbitrary standalone string as a secret key. Just like a password, it's crucial that the secret can't be easily guessed or brute forced by an attacker. Otherwise, they may be able to create JWTs with any header and payload values they like, then use the key to re-sign the token with a valid signature. When implementing JWT applications, developers sometimes make mistakes like forgetting to change the default or placeholder secrets. They may even copy and paste code snippets that they find online and forget to change the hard-coded secret that's provided as an example. In this case, it can be trivial for an attacker to brute force a server secret using a word list of well-known secrets. So one thing to mention here is it says that some signing algorithms use a standalone string as a secret key, but it doesn't mention the fact that other algorithms, which aren't symmetric, so like RS256, which is asymmetric, won't use a single key for both signing and verifying tokens, so they'll be separate keys. Portswigger recommends using Hashcat to brute force secret keys. You can install that manually, but it does come pre-installed on Kali Linux and Parrot OS as well. However, potentially, depending on the VM settings, you might have some issues running Hashcat. And I'll add that although I often use Hashcat in the VM for very simple challenges that are likely to have a easy to brute force key, I often use Hashcat on my host system to utilize the GPU and it's exponentially faster than doing it within a VM. All you need is a valid signed JWT from the target server and a word list of well-known secrets. You can then run the following command, passing in the JWT and the word list as arguments. Hashcat signs a header and payload from the JWT using each secret in a word list and then compares the result signature with the original one from the server. If any of the signatures match, Hashcat outputs the identified secret in the following format, along with various other details. There's also a note there, if you have already found the correct secret and you try to run Hashcat again, it won't actually show up with the result because you've already found it. In that case, you can use dash dash show to show hashes that have been cracked and are in the pot file. Since Hashcat runs locally on the machine and doesn't rely on sending requests to the server, this process is extremely quick, even when using a huge word list. Once you've identified the secret key, you can use that to generate a valid signature for any JWT header and payload that you like. For details on how to do that, we can look at Burp Suite's Editing JWTs, which has a couple of extensions, and we'll look at that in this video. And that brings us on to the lab. The description says, this lab uses a JWT-based mechanism for handling sessions. It uses an extremely weak secret key to both sign and verify tokens, and this can be easily brute forced using a word list of common secrets, which we've been given a link to. To solve the lab, first brute force the website secret key. Once you've obtained this, use it to sign a modified session token that gives you access to the admin panel, and then delete the user Carlos. So we've been given some credentials to log in with to begin with. Let's go and do that first of all. So we're going to log in with these credentials. And we want to have a look now at our JWT. So you can open up the dev tools with F12 and have a look at our session cookie. And it's in here, so we can take a copy of that and take it through to JWT.io or whatever you want to use to decode the token. You could also, of course, grab this from Burp Suite. Just go and grab the request there and you'll find the JWT. But at the moment, there's not really much to look at in here. We can see that as in the previous two labs, we've got a key ID and an algorithm in the header, and then we've got our ISS is port swigger, sub is wiener, and the expiration as well. And we want to change this sub to administrator. The problem is, of course, that if we change this to administrator, the signature isn't going to match, and we're going to need to re-sign it with the secret key, which we don't yet know. So, as we've done in the previous videos, let's start off by taking a look at a demo Python script. I'm going to open this up in VS Code. And we need to put our token in here, so I'm going to grab a copy of that. We'll paste that up here. I've got this set to the RockU word list. This is a really old word list from a breach. I think it was like 2008, if I'm not mistaken. And it's quite often used for like CTFs and Hack the Box and stuff because it's a very generic word list. And if you're doing a challenge trying to demonstrate some kind of exploit or vulnerability, there's no point in just spending days 
brute forcing. So there we go, we've set that and we have a couple of functions here. Let's go down to the bottom where it all starts. So we're gonna fuzz the secret key with the wordless file we provided. And if we find it, it's gonna say we found it. If not, it'll say not found. And the function that it's calling, fuzz secret key, the first thing it's gonna do is try and find out what the algorithm is. So I could have just hard coded this as HS256, but I thought it'd be better just to actually find this dynamically and then it's going to open up the word list and it's going to attempt fuzzing. So for each word in the word list, it's going to call this function and this function is going to try and decode the token with the secret key from the word list. So if it's valid, if it doesn't come back with a signature error, then it means we found the secret key. If not, then it's obviously not the key and it needs to go on to the next word in the word list and it'll keep doing that until it's exhausted. So you could also do this with like a character, brute force, give it a char set and then just loop through like say the secret key is up to 10 characters long and then just loop through every possible character. Now you could modify this script again and say that once you've found the secret key, add another function to modify the token. So you decode it, you change the username to administrator and then re-sign it with the secret key that we found, print that out and then we can just go and paste it into the browser. Or we could even just make that HTTP request directly from the Python script. But since we're looking at multiple tools for doing this, we don't need to do every stage in every tool. So let's just try and run this and see what we get. I'm going to do Python demo and it comes back instantly with the secret one. So nice, easy one to brute force. The algorithm was as we expected, HS256. So it's a symmetric key and we've got our secret key. So we could go and try to verify this and we can do that in burp suite with the editor extensions that we've got. So before we do that, let's just try and use hashcat as well. So you can do hashcat-h if you want to get a list of all the various modes. So one of these modes is going to be JWT. I can try and do grep-i for case insensitive and then JWT. And there you go, it's 1,000, sorry, 16,500. So that's fine, do hashcat. We can do attack mode zero. And then our mode is 16,500 and then our token so grab a copy of this and then the word list so i'm going to use again rock you i've actually got this set as a environment variable so i can just do that and again it's a lot faster if you do this with your gpu rather than with the cpu inside of vm but with the secret just being secret one it shouldn't take very long and there we go it took 20 seconds to find that the secret was secret one and most of that time really was just at processing the word list. It took a while to actually start cracking. As soon as it starts, really, it's found it. So there's two different ways that we could find the secret. Now let's go and use it. So I'm going to go back to the challenge page. I'm going to close this down. Let's just refresh the page. And I'm going to send that to the repeater. Let's maximize this. And we've got our JWT here. So we've got our two extensions. Let's select the first one and change this to administrator looking good. Now we want to add our new signature. So recalculate signature. You can also load a secret or key from file, but in this case, I'm going to recalculate and I'm going to say here secret one. And that's basically it. We can hit send. And if we hit send, go and have a look through the details, we'll see we are the administrator. So that's it. We could go and delete that user now. Let's have a look with JSON web token as well. So we've already got this as administrator. Let's try and change that to Carlos and then click on sign. No signing keys have been added. So we have this JWT editors keys. I've not actually used this, so I'm not too sure how this is gonna work. It's asking us to generate a key for symmetric, but it's not actually giving us a secret key box. Let me click on generate. No, that doesn't look right. Have a look through the options here. Again, let's just generate. It's not asking us what the secret is. Those options don't sound right anyway. The password one might be right. The new password one has a key ID in it. Can we go and grab our KID? And then password is secret one, but then how's this stuff about salt length and iterations, which I don't know, are they supposed to be the defaults? It also doesn't have a signing option. Let me go back to the repeater and try it. No signing keys have been added. Well, I'm not really seeing how we can add the signing key. Weird. Okay. Um, maybe you can't use this extension for this. I'm not too sure. You can also use the JSON web tokens up here as well. So if we just grabbed our JWT from our cookies, we could go and paste it in here and we could manually try some secret keys here. You see the first one works, the others don't. 
But if you find the right one, you can't modify it here anyway. You still need to go back to the repeater to do that or go and do it in jwt.io or the JWT tool or Cyberchef or something like that. Okay, that's enough of Burp Suite. If somebody can let me know what I did wrong with the JWT editor keys, then that'll be cool. For now, let's just go and take a look at the JWT tool as well. So we can run this with a JWT. It's going to come back and tell us what all the details are. And then if we do dash H, we'll see what options we've got. We know that one of them is to crack the password because we did that on, was it the first video or the second video? Just as a demonstration of this tool. So let's do dash C for crack and then dash D for dictionary. And then you can give it that word list. I'm going to give it the alias for rock U. And instantly comes back with a secret key, actually a lot quicker than Hashcat did. I guess it didn't really process the word list in the same way. And that's fine then. We can now tamper with it. We could use dash I, which is the inject claims option. So we do dash I and then we do dash IV and KV and stuff like that, which we've done in a previous video. So I'm not going to go through that one again. Let's do the tamper option. And I'm going to do dash T and then we'll do... Let me do the other options first. Dash S is HS256 and then dash P is secret one. So they actually gave us what we need there to basically copy and paste. We run through it. We don't want to change anything in the header. So we'll go zero next step. And then we want to change number two. So we'll change that to administrator. And then zero to continue. And that's it. It's tampered with the token and it's given us the new signed one. So if we go back to the lab, hit F12 and go and paste in our new JWT. Refresh the page and we're now the administrator. So very simple from here, just go and delete Carlos and congratulations, you solved the lab. So the remediation is nice and simple for this one. Just make sure that you use a strong signing key, one that's not predictable and one that is private. So make sure it's not found somewhere on a Git repo or on a YouTube video. That happened to me with my old virus total API key and make sure it's not something that can be easily brute force with a word list or by doing a standard character brute force. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm over on the Integrity website at the moment, just encouraging you to go and sign up and check out some of the programs. If you're trying to hunt for some JWT vulnerabilities, this is a good place to get started. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.